Good morning. Ish. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name is Graham D. And I'm joined by Mr. BB. All right, Bib. Good after morning. Yes, 25 to 4. It's not It's not the latest show. It's definitely not the earliest one. Ah, it's so the I... earliest one this week, though. I mean, we did say in the Discord that we were going to be late, so that's foreshadowing. So mm. Wes did write, good morning, ish, ish, ish. And I was like, well, technically, it's just it's 10 a.m. ish, just the one-ish, because we got rid of the other two by, by by saying we were going to be late. So, you know, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Just the one, actually. It's just the one-ish, actually, mate. Yeah, it's all too right at. Uh, redeemed match sponsorship. West wants his Masters of the League match sponsored uh, okay. for 2000 Sprinkles. You've been waiting a long time for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you could go back to the past, then you'd be able, then we would have done that for you. Do you know it, it amazes me how many episodes we got into that. Like for those mm. that, for those that don't know, we used to have a series on the channel called Masters of the League where we used to play uh, football and we had green screen stuff. So we were in the stadium, we were on the training pitches, we were in like VIP areas in the football stadium. It was cool. It was cool. We, we were hampered by lockdown, but we found ways through it. It was it was good. Mm. Um, and I thought, like, in my brain, it was something we did for a couple of weeks, few weeks, maybe a month or two. <laughs> and then it was only the other day, uh, so yesterday, when I was looking for an image of Alexander Isak in an Ice Cream Uploads jersey to post in the Discord. Obviously, Isak played for Newcastle in the mm -hmm. Carabao Cup final against United. Um, and I wanted to go like, like, do you know what? He didn't win the Carabao Cup, but he has he has played at a much higher level before. Uh, and I wanted to post a picture. And then it was like, that we, I was seeing like episode 68 and whatever and I was like fuck because if we, we had like and it was well beyond that as well like the amount of episodes yeah, that we had I think I'm sure it was over 100 I'm sure it was over 100 but it was like was it three times a week for like eight months or something it might be two times a week it was it was it was a good chunk. We start maybe about six months. Maybe we started it in Aprilish, and then we finished it at Christmas. I say finish. We stopped with the Christmas break, and then there was changing over from Streamlabs OBS to OBS, and having to import all the sound files, and then furlough stuff ending, and and so on. And, and we just we just left it there because the amount of time it would have taken versus the amount of time that we needed to run it versus what we'd have got back from it, it was just a bit of a time sink. So we we abandoned it. But. If we were to play a game of football right now, we would sponsor this match for West. Uh, hi. Welcome to the ICU arena, where this match is sponsored by West077 on Twitch. Nice. Uh, if you want the single greatest ingredient that the world could offer, yes, yes, we are talking about eggs. Then, And you wonder yourself, how could I serve this up? Well, first of all, you get yourself a nice little piece of bread. I mean, I mean, whatever you want. It could be something soft. It could be a crusty loaf. You could toast it if you want. Golden brown. It's smother of pure, lightly salted butter on the top. Oof. Whop yourself a poached egg on top of that. Bit of, bit of pepper. Bit of salt on top of it. Nice. Mm -hmm. Get yourself. Keep it going. Get Talk a knife. Going get a knife. Position the knife just on the top of the white of the poached egg. And just as you're about to push the knife in to release all of that gooey, yolky goodness, whop some ketchup all over it and pow, smash. And then eat. Job's good. Job's good. Job, job. <laughs> Let's go. Never to again. <laughs> Stop. Stop there. <laughs> Sorry, West. Sorry, West. You knew it was coming. It was always, it was always, it was always happening. It was always happening. I, because I'm not going to charge you for that sponsorship because I was always going to take the piss out of it. So we'll give you sprinkles back. You're welcome. Nice. For those that don't know, by the way, do feel free to check out West. Even a zone audio drop in the stream. Like, like, what, a Welcome to the stream. Nice. 50% egg. And what? 50% shed. What is his name? You know him as what is it? West. Suck my Aries. Yeah, you can suck his Aries over at twitch.tv forward slash West. That's W E S T 077. Nice. How West is it? Very West. It's the Westest of Wests that could be West. Dud. Cookies. Welcome in. Anyone else that's in the stream, please do feel free to drop into the chat. Do say hi. Uh, has West has, Tito has, Cookies has, uh, and so have we. Nice. JMK has dropped in with a little bit of a time at 3.34, which is basically 10 a.m.-ish. Thank you, chatbot. We agree. Mm -hmm. It is basically 10 a.m.-ish. If anyone else is in the stream, please do feel free to get involved because this is The Scoop, the UK's number one video game podcast, if we do say so ourselves. We are live because it's now 10 a.m. on uh, twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads where we go live each and every single weekday at this specific time, which is 10 a.m. 
Ish. Ish. Tony Amish, we work in the video games industry, so the start's a little bit fluid, let's just leave it like that. Um, yeah, we do have the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories from the world of video games to run through with you guys now for the next hour-ish, ish, you'll, you'll find out that ish is uh, an ever-present thing if you didn't know that already, um, <laughs> yeah, ish, uh, we will give you the biggest, the best, the breaking stories in the world of video games, plus our thoughts and impressions, and we want to hear your thoughts and impressions, then your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions, that's kind of how the whole thing works, so please do feel free to get involved, and it's important that you do, because we may be live on Twitch, but the live stream is turned into a podcast, a video on YouTube, and this is where it gets complex for me now. Because yes. after years, like 700 nearly episodes of saying we're available on iTunes, Spotify, <gasps> Anchor has led us to not have SoundCloud, but uh, Amazon Music and Google Play. Yeah. Let's go! <laughs> nice. Let's go. So yeah, no, no more SoundCloud. iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Play, or Amazon Podcasts, whatever it is, and Google Play. You can feel free to uh, check it out on demand on all of those places, as well as on Twitch as a pod. And it's important that if you are in the stream, you do feel free to get involved because being across all those podcast services, we've chalked up quite a bit of the following. Nearly 200,000 people have watched and listened to this podcast on demand. So if you get involved, you can get involved on behalf of all of those people as well as yourself. But before we do get involved, let me remind you that all subscribers on this channel get prizes. Anyone that hasn't subscribed to the channel and thinks, you know what, I could drop a sub, then do feel free. Um, not only will it spare you from the adverts that Twitch throws at people, we can't control ads, Twitch, Twitch does it. We do get a little bit of a kickback from it, but Twitch sorts it. Um, so not only do ads spare you from that, but you also get access to our remotes, but subs are all thrown into a giveaway where once Per month, someone bags himself a prize just for being a sub to the channel. So not only do you get all those other benefits, but you're automatically entered into a giveaway. And that will be on Monday. Not the Monday that we're on, but next Monday will be the first Monday of the month. And that is when we will do the loot drop. What, what, what do you fancy giving away, babe? Not, not even. I don't know, Graham. But I don't know if there's anything that's coming out or come... Well, there's obviously Hogwarts Legacy. That's the biggest game out right now. Or Sons of Forest or... I'm not too sure. I, I I always loved the idea of. I mean, what was that game that got chosen last time? I can't remember. I can't remember who won it. Sunlight. Sunlight chose. Sunlight. That's it. On, Sunlight. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sunlight. Basically, she only plays PUBG from, from uh, and had a look for something else on Steam and was like, "I'll just have that one." I was like, "Okay, nice." So we 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 gifted a game to Sunlight. Let's go. Um, but yeah, if there's anything that you want to win, maybe, uh, within reason, obviously, about the same price as a standard released video game, um, then do feel free to throw it in the Discord. We have a channel called Loot Drop. If there's anything you'd like to win, then do feel free to throw it in there. Anything you want to suggest, obviously, keep it keep it clean. You know, We know what you like. We're not opening the floodgates for Enzo to be full Enzo in there. Let's put it yeah. that way. Well, Enzo actually wants me to give him a guitar lesson. Oh, okay. If he in, ends up winning. In that case, then yeah, sold. Uh, you will get a live streamed one hour on Twitch with Bibe to teach you stuff. Well, first of all, yeah. you uh, you reach to the side. And then once you, your hand's at the side, you grab the guitar. Okay, that's the first part of the lesson. Let's spend 15 minutes learning to pick it up. <laughs> nice. This is the only guitar I'm shredding, Graham, and no longer on stream either. Fuck you, DMCA. <laughs> One hour would be epic. I feel the content would start to run dry after five minutes. No, no, no. You, 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 you underestimate our opportunity to flog a very dead donkey. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so five minutes of just picking the guitar up. Fifteen minutes of uh, adding the exclamation mark FF free game Friday command just so you can hear Bibby's previous guitar escapade. <laughs> We've got to go through the history of the guitar as well and where the strings were manufactured and what what guitar pick I'm using and the, the density of the room, acoustics and stuff like we we could we can definitely fill out two hours. And then it'd be like, 50, like fifty nine minutes, it'd be like, Okay, we've had enough of the history kind of thing now. So we're at the point where we're just about to actually play some tunes for you on the guitar. You ready? Oh, oh, time up, sorry, that's it. Oh tune in for next. Oh, oh, it was only a one-hour session, wasn't it? Oh, there is no other episodes. Oh, well. And then we move on. <laughs> oh, in, in joke there from Bib. Nice. Anyone that has a weird, like, phobia of people gulping and stuff. We, the, <laughs> the reason we are late is because we had a, 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 a conference call earlier on today. And as I jumped into the conference call, all I heard was a bit this. 
I heard this first. <laughs> like, but but one of those, like a sploosh, <laughs> followed by. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had to quickly uh, send Bibby a message on Discord going, fuck, what, what did I, I can't even find the exact word. It was something like, fuck <laughs> me. Gulp on that. Gulp, that. Yeah, fuck me, gulp and half, or gulp on that, or something like that. <laughs> Bibby's, uh, Bibby's gain had just been turned up full and his mic was open, so we could just hear him absolutely <laughs> necking. Uh, so yeah, fun times. Nice. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's never it's never a dull day, is it? It's never a dull day. <laughs> Fun times. Fun times. Um, Speaking of dull days, boom. My name is Optimus Prime. Woo! Bibtimus Prime! Apparently it's our 52nd anniversary. All right, 52 months, settle down. Chill out, love. Bloody hell, woo! So I, I was I was subbing before I was even part of Jelly Media. That's why it's been so long. It's not uh, you started now. You have to give your sub to us. It's literally this is a continuous thing. I mean that doesn't help because I started subbing when we created the channel and I'm part of it. So if that now you've started, you have to give your sub was a thing. Then I wouldn't have less subs than you. But I just keep forgetting it's there. <laughs> <Fuck>! <laughs> Wasted my prime again. No. Um, I just want a nitpick. Uh, a toenail and some saliva. Too much to ask about? No, we can sort that out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, although we can't give you a toenail or a nip pick. We can give you a toe pick and a nip. It's the other way around. We'll give you an actual nipple and a picture yeah. of a toenail, if, if that's fine. Well, it's a compromise, but that's what we can sort out. We will give you one of Bibby's nipples and a picture of a toenail. Is that okay? Nice? Nice? The saliva, we'll, well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, God, that's just like all my therapy sessions. <laughs> ah, we were just about to get to the uh, root of your problems, but that will definitely be you paying again next week where we will do the same thing again. Nice. Uh, Bibi will show all his guitar picks and then say, take your pick. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan of that. <laughs> uh, sold, says Tito. I, I well thought, how the fuck did I just hear a guitar then? I didn't realise. So in tune. <laughs> to be fair, it sounded like the intro for The Last of Us. If you've not seen The Last of Us, then that's literally how The Last of Us TV series intro music sounds. Bibby is... I know, and they keep on paying me royalties. Yeah, exactly. Oof, oof. Do you know what? Fuck's sake. Dib... I have to delete this dib? now. We'll get... I, I, I didn't say dib, I went dib... Because uh, I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I said dib. Big dibby! <laughs> <laughs> That's your name now, by the way. <laughs> Let's go, Dib. <laughs> no, I was gonna say, di I was gonna say, do you fucking know? But then, yeah, we're gonna have to delete the stream now because you know DMCA. Mm -hmm. Definitely gonna get done for that. Those two notes are definitely the Last of Us soundtrack. That's Romeo it. done. Oh, no, unfortunate, unfortunate. Graham one, cook is nil. Score, nice. It's all right. You'll get a free nip in the post. Job's good. Let's go. Uh, okay. Um, enough about the nips in the post. It's not really. There'll be loads of them. Loads. Bibby's actually got seven nips, just in case you didn't, if you wanted. Loads, loads of winners. We'll spread that out for, for halfway through the year. Let's go. Um, should we talk about video game news instead? I think we should. Nice. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. <laughs> nice. Uh, Jordan Midler at VGC has our headline story, and it says that Nintendo confirms that it will not attend E3 2023. And I, I can't confirm... Or deny, but I'm pretty much confirming that Nintendo are not going to be at E3 because we've decided that we aren't going to be at E3. Yeah. That's the only reason, right? I see you aren't going. Nintendo gone, well, fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. After that, we'll talk about the Sons of the Forest. New game. Nice. It sold 2 million copies in its first 24 hours of early access. It's the Whoa. fifth most played game on Steam in the last 24 hours. 2 million copies in a day. Easy that. That's, was it 16, 18 stone in a day? Nice. <laughs> 18 stone in a day. Uh, then we jump over to the gamer where Rhiannon Bevan has the next article. It says Starfield Showcase will reportedly be announced next week. All these new games and stuff. Speaking of new games, the day before. May one day actually be a new game. Uh, but it's kind of been delayed because of a trademark issue that, that might or might not have been true. Well, uh, the the website GamingBolt.com has an article that says the, the day before trademark issues are legitimate. It's been confirmed. So the game is real. 
if you were, if you weren't sure if it was just a con or whatever and all, I mean, we've said it's it's, it's got to be real. It's definitely not a con. You can't go. You don't go through that much effort and not actually take money off someone if you're conning them. Mm-hmm. It's got to be anyway. Anyway, don't. I've not read through the article, but apparently it's legit. It's legit. So we'll jump into that. But first, <clears throat> E3 2023 Nintendo list. Is that a surprising bit? At this point, no, because I think it. I don't think it's going to happen. Um... If it does, it's just going to be a, an, an indie showcase at this moment in time. But no, it's not surprising to me at all. <coughs> I'm dying. Nice. <coughs> I did mute it. Lost half of it, but it's back. I was uh, trying to, I'm, I'm trying to fill. No, you, you did good. You did good. Enzo says, I've just realized why Graham has extra energy today. Fucking Man United. Uh, no, Graham has extra energy today because he's, his headache that he had on, on his, I'm talking like on the rock, his Graham's headache. Is big. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my headache that I had on Saturday was actually there on Friday and was there on Thursday and remained on Sunday and is still here today. I feel like I've got Lurge. Um So my extra energy is me trying to, like, fucking mind over matter, baby. So, yeah, there we go. There we go. Anyway, jump into the story. Jordan Midler at VGC says, Nintendo confirms it will not attend E3 2023. The E3 show, quote, didn't fit in Nintendo's plans for the year. So into the body of the article, Nintendo has confirmed that it has no plans to attend E3 2023. In a new statement, the platform holder confirmed that it will not be a part of the resurrected event, which is scheduled to take place in June. Quote, we approach our involvement in any event on a case-by-case basis and are always considering various ways to engage with our fans. End quote, Nintendo said in a statement. Continuing that quote... Since this year's E3 show didn't fit into our plans, we have made the decision to not participate. However, we have been and continue to be a strong supporter of the ESA and E3, end quote. This statement confirms reports from earlier this month that the Japanese firm would join PlayStation in not formally attending the E3 show. So far, Ubisoft has been the largest publisher to confirm its appearance at the show. Microsoft will have some form of presence in Los Angeles this year with an already announced summer uh, showcase. However, according to IGN, the Xbox firm will not have a show floor presence at the LA Convention Center itself. Details of E3's revamped 2023 format, which will see separate business and consumer events split between four days in June, were revealed late last year and covered by IGN cream uploads but we'll we'll leave that bit for now for now though we can talk about the fact that nintendo confirms it will not be at e3 2023 thoughts babe yeah i mean that i think we actually called this either last week or the week before when we were talking about e3 and the fact that obviously xbox will be doing their own thing over the road and playstation aren't going to be there nintendo not arriving you don't have to be there just to be seen these companies are way too big for that they have their own uh, showcases again we've mentioned this before we feel like um the the nintendo showcases or the Nindy directs are the thing that spurred on playstation to do state of plays and xbox to show their um content off i can't what is it xbox on is yeah. that i can't remember uh, what yeah. it's called there's xbox on and there's outside xbox i never remember which one's which anymore so yes yeah. so they have their own conferences like just to be just to go to e3 nowadays if you've got something big planned, then obviously that's the place where you want to be able to showcase it. You can get hands on. Like last time I went to Games Con, for instance, there were just Nintendo kiosks around their little tree treehouse area, um, and you could play on anything that was there. Like Ring Fit Adventure, I think, was there that year. So obviously it's a brand new piece of kit that's coming out with a brand new game. Um, and then I think there was leading up to a new Pokemon game. There was a massive, massive game um, that was coming out on on the switch at the time and there was queues for it for ages and i can't remember what it was um well it wasn't, oh, it wasn't i honestly can't arceus, remember was it pokemon legends arceus. it might have been arceus it might have been arceus yeah because you know, people only got to play it for like 20 minutes um but there was if it wasn't that it was another massive nintendo game that was coming out of the time because the queues was ridiculous for it it was like a four hour queue um but anyway you don't have to go to every single convention and nowadays if nintendo aren't ready to show something or playstation aren't ready to show something you don't have to they can do it themselves um so yeah i think that's uh, i think that they may end up making an appearance next year but they also could just be looking from afar and just going we'll wait to see how this one plays out before we return to doing this and like you guys might not know how expensive these shows are to be at like the, the at least six quid is. 
at least, at least six, six quid. quid. Yeah. Uh, the kiosk sizes for something like a Nintendo being there will cost them hundreds of thousands. It's not a case of, right, we've got a marketing budget of four grand. No, everything everything is bigger at E3. Everything is bigger at Gamescom. The floor, the floor space is a ridiculous price, especially when you're paying a premium for big brands like that. So they'll just want to keep that marketing budget to one side until they're ready to be able to spend that on marketing the new Legend of Zelda game or a new Super Mario game coming down the line or something along uh, where they think it's going to make more sense for them. They might return when we bring it, when they bring out a new console because we're getting all sorts of uh, hints that one may be arriving in the very near future within the next 18 months or so. So... Yeah, this isn't that surprising to me. I've got a feeling that the next year, 2024, is going to be such a chocker calendar year for console revisions. We might end up getting a new PlayStation 5 version, a slimmer version, uh, a new Xbox Series X uh, in terms of maybe a, 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 a slight performance enhancement bigger, um, or a new Series S. Bigger uh, you know SSD, I mean? that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I think in the next 18 months, we're going to see a lot of hardware revisions as well as maybe a look at a brand new uh, Nintendo console. So yeah, keep keep your eyes on this space. I'm fairly certain Nintendo will be dropping some news at some point. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not surprising for me. Like Nintendo matched the beat of their own drum and they always have done. Um, and it's not exactly like it's a new statement. We approach our involvement on any event on a case-by-case basis, says Nintendo, which is almost a complete rehash of PlayStation first dropping out of E3. They were like, mm. we look at, uh, we're looking at the, the whole year ahead and we are judging whether we want to attend events based on whether we've got announcements that, that are worth it. And we feel that E3 at this time isn't really worth it. Instead, mm. we wanted to to join more events that are more of a celebration where we can, uh, so on. So basically, rather than going big, we'll, we'll go for the smaller events and celebrate our games with the community directly because we don't have as many big uh, tentpole announcements. And that's pretty much what uh, Nintendo has said, right down to the, however, we have been and continue to be a strong supporter of the ESA and E3. Obviously, you have to finish with that. I mean, we're, we're not breaking up. We're just having a bit of a bit of time apart. And PlayStation did the yeah. exact same thing. So it's it's... It's one from the playbook, and it's mm-hmm. not a bad thing. Nintendo don't have the announcements to justify such a massive outlay, um, and that used to be a necessity. Going to E3 meant you stayed in the conversation. It meant that you stayed relevant. It meant that you stayed fashionable, for want of a better phrase. You were You were on trend. But now you can make your own trends consistently across your own social channels, working with content creators, working with content outfits. Not necessarily that you're influencer creators, but but mm. your ice cream uploads, your uh, your kind of funnies and and whatever. There, there is so many different avenues out there to to keep your brand relevant throughout the year. That E three, obviously, we've mentioned this a million times, loses its pull, um, which is a shame. For me, uh, and probably for a lot of people, for me, love the idea of an E3. And, and, it, and it still exists. Ubisoft has said, yeah, we understand that it has a place in the calendar. We will be there if it's going to happen. There's going to be no PlayStation. There's going to be no Nintendo. This kind of a Microsoft. But if you've got Jeff Keighley trying to make another profitable competitor to it, you know that there is something there. And E3 yeah. and the ESA and Reed Pop who makes some of the biggest and most successful video game events in the world, um, are all interested in making it happen, then there's definitely something there. The only bit now, though, is the difficult part. Because Ubisoft are going, yeah, we'll be there as long as it's going to happen. And if it, if if not, if they don't get anyone else there, it's going to be an awkward event. Because I've seen, mm-hmm. do you know what? Fair play to Ubisoft. I've seen Ubisoft at a lot of games events, like, like MCMs in London, when it's been... Uh, a little kind of like just after e- when everything was squashed into window you've got e3 gamescom uh egx and then you've got an mcm in london i've seen ubisoft being there with assassin's creed on a stand I've egx more recently ubisoft have been there with not much else around ubisoft are there like fuck it we're, we're showing up we're representing baby um whether it's a bit of a silly idea which kind of linked to their video game development stuff that we've spoken about recently just just fucking just throw games and stands and money at it people just yeah great um but ubisoft always turn up the difficulty though now is getting value back into e3 that is not just available elsewhere like you get the 
there's there's no s- strategic benefit being in content creator circles uh, over events. They are both very useful things. It's probably not the right way of phrasing no strategic benefit. There is, depending on what you need. Um, but they are both valuable. Is basically what I'm trying to say. But this the, the value of E3 has been weakened to the point where people see it as optional. People being the brands are, are choosing to not attend. And if if brands like the Ubisoft are sat there going, well, if others are going to go, then I'll go. If you get too many of that, then everyone goes, well, it doesn't look like anyone's going to go, so I'm not going to go either. Uh, and then everyone starts dropping out. You need to make it desirable. You need to punch yeah. through. Give them something. Like, what's what's the phrase? From Scrooged, it's like, it's not enough to just have people uh, want to watch it. This is the very start of the film when he's talking about the Scrooged, uh, the Scrooge uh, show that they're going to have on through the holidays. Like, it can't just be enough that people want to watch it. You have to make it so that people will be absolutely terrified that they missed it, um, so that they are definitely there. And that's what E3 needs to get back to. It, it can't just be, oh, that, that'll be a cool thing with some stuff. It needs mm-hmm. to offer something different that makes playstation go okay it's not just another event it's not just the stream that we can do our own that we can fully edit beforehand and so on that that like the keanu reeves your breathtaking moment was a great moment in the xbox conference but could have also been a horrendous moment if that was someone else shouting something that was a bit nastier um so why do i want to open myself up to these amazing moments when i'm also opening myself up to horrendous moments and spending (laughs) a shitload of money for it when i can just do a direct that's pre-recorded and so on they need to build something in that has that massive value so nintendo not being at e3 not a surprise um Especially with so much conversation ongoing about, do they have anything? They are they're, they're devoid of messaging. My name is Optimus oh. Prime. Enix, thank you very much for 31 months. Ah, Legend. no. Let's honestly talk about Nintendo. And mm-hmm. Enix rocks, rocks up. I bet he's bought himself a couple of Switches this week, sold them off as well already, and then bought another one again and, and sold that again and, and so on. I'll read Enix. Welcome in. Um, yeah, E3. Has value, has massive value. That's the reason why everyone's still keeping the door open. But mm-hmm. but having massive value or having potential for massive value doesn't necessarily get people to go through the door. It just keeps the door open. They need to do something. And this is the difficult thing. It's not going to happen this year. I think, I say I think, there is enough evidence to show that this year will be successful, but also a little bit of a write-off. By next year, the ESA and Read Pop need to have a proper strategic plan of what they do to change this. And it could be something yeah. drastic like write the theme tune, sing the theme tune, get Jeff Keighley <laughs> and the Summer Game Fest in as part of an honorary uh, part of it. Say, look, we appreciate what you've done with Summer Game Fest and, and E3 and so on, and we want you to help us take this forward, and we want to merge and sh- join forces and share and all that sort of stuff. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Um, but Nintendo not going doesn't surprise me just based on their own calendar, let alone the Ether thing. Uh, no, only thing is my new phone. Did you buy and sell it straight away? But you did. But you did. Well, you spent uh, it, it, it made spot on Twitter the other day that he spent fifteen hundred pound pissed up on new video games. So he's like, I'm gonna be sound for a while, lads. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> you spent fifteen hundred quid on new video. How many did you buy? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's got to be collector's editions. Or no, something, it was right? it was just one. It was just like the uh, the Subaru Impreza of it, edition of Colin McRae '98 that comes with an actual Subaru Impreza, but now doesn't work. So he had to get a flatbed <laughs> truck to get it sent to him. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> nice, good effort. You love to see it. Tell you what, do you know what? You didn't need to buy all of those. You could have just bought one video game. Uh, and there's one that a lot of people are buying as well. Nice segue into our next news article, which is this. Jordan Midler at VGC says, Sons of the Forest sold 2 million copies in the first 24 hours of early access. It's the fifth most played game on Steam in the last 24 hours. Um, okay, just going to repeat all that again because that's what VGC does. Uh, Sons of the Forest has sold over 2 million copies in its first 24 hours of early access. Nice. If only you knew that information before. Uh, that's according to a tweet from developer End Night Games. Quote, thanks to those who have joined us in our early access into Sons of the Forest, the tweet reads, we have sold over 2 million copies in the first 24 hours and are very excited for what we have in store for players in the coming weeks. Don't know if you can hear Milo in the background. If you can, enjoy. Um, mm-hmm. 
The survival game has already broken into the top 20 list of the highest all-time peak players on the independent Steam database, SteamDB. Uh, at the time of writing, it's the fifth most played on, uh, game on the platform in the last 24 hours, topping blockbusters like Hogwarts Legacy and Warzone 2.0. Quote, sent to find a missing billionaire on a remote island, you find yourself in a cannibal-infested hellscape. Or hide. Manchester, if you... Okay, I'm joking. You're not going to get a billionaire in Hyde. Okay. <laughs> uh, craft, build, and struggle... Baby's from Hyde, just in case you didn't get that message. Nice. Uh, craft, build, <laughs> and struggle to survive alone or with friends in this terrifying new open-world survival horror simulator reads an official description for the game. The game is planned to be in early access for around six to eight months, but according to the developers, this could change. Quote, we will leave early access when we are certain this is the best version of the game possible. Quote, end quote, reads a message on the Steam page. Uh, the developer's previous game, The Forest, is still massively popular and grew a following due to being featured by popular streamers and YouTube content creators. It's unclear if the Sons of the Forest will appear on other platforms. The Forest uh, was released originally on PC in April 2018 before appearing on PS4 in November. <gasps> nice. Uh, just want to shout this out. This is absolutely smashing it. Je uh, like... We we've got we've got quite a lot of cool friends on Ice Cream Plus. We know quite a lot of established content creators, and I'm seeing massive content creators already getting thumbnails made and stuff for shitloads of this Sons of the Forest content. Um, Mini Minter, for an example, um, his I know, I know his graphic designer, and he's posted some of the, uh, his uh, thumbnails on Twitter, and he's already got tons of this stuff, and it's only just come out in early access. Mm -hmm. We're only at minutes minutes away from the Doctor Disrespect sort of like full walking out yeah. into a forest 3D uh, cutscene stuff. And I'm, I'm here all f uh, for that, by the way. Let's go, let's go. Um, yeah. But is this a surprise? Did you see this coming? Sons of the Forest sold 2 million copies in 24 hours. Thoughts, babe? Yeah, I mean, the forest is a ridiculously popular game. Um, so no, this doesn't... This doesn't strike me as something that is completely out of the blue. I, I didn't think it. I'm, hand on heart, two million is ridiculous. Like that yeah. is an outrageous amount uh, of games being sold, um, regardless of what it is off the bat. But the for and the forest is massive. Like I remember uh, in my old job, the the guy who used to work alongside, like he would play games like this all the time. He was he wasn't the obviously the one that got me into these games, but he was the one that put the forest on the map for me to have a look at. Um, so the Sons of the Forest being at this point... Um, well, it was a cartographer. Critical he, he put the forests on the map. That's pretty cool. Nice. In hide, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, this, this kind of doesn't surprise me that it's as popular as it is. But two million is genuinely ridiculous. Going back to the Doctor Disrespect thing, and this this is actually going to sound like I'm throwing shade, but I'm really not. Have you have you seen his stream setup? He posted a picture. Well, Guy Beam posted the picture of his yeah, stream setup, so and I thought it was going to be. It look it genuinely looks like our studio, <laughs> like the size of it. I thought it was way bigger. Our studio um, is way more advanced than Doctor Disrespect setup, which is mind blowing. Which just goes to show that if you keep it simple, you can achieve massive, massive things. The biggest thing for absolutely. me though was Guy Beam's image that he, sh he shared. When Doctor Disrespect cuts to his green screen bits where he walks in, so you might have seen mm -hmm. him in the arena. You might have seen him like walking in as a as a clicker in the in the Last of Us playthrough and, and stuff like that. That is just a wall that has green stuff on it, naturally. Not not a green screen curtain. It's just got a green wall that he walks into, which kind of makes sense because it's a permanent bit there. But it's the fact that he's just got a Logitech C920 just stuck on the wall above him that's looking at that. It's not any 4K camera. It's just a 25 quid camera. 20, well, 50 quid camera, but it can be 25, can be 75 quid. Uh, it's just the fact that the two time has a C920 mm. as his as cut screen camera, which is amazing. Fuck. Absolutely. Like it like <clears> you <throat> said, it just because you have uh, a very expensive studio or room that has everything in, like the kit that he's using, fair enough, like he's using Rollcat keyboard mouses, he's using uh, Turtle Beach headsets and stuff. All of that stuff is premium, premium shit. Um, but like you could just the, the room size and for, I genuinely thought it was bigger than what it is. Um, but it's just made it, it still is the most inventive person on Twitch, like uh, not on Twitch, on YouTube, like in the content creation space, 
his imagination, like you said, with this being what the forest is going to look like, absolutely, I can imagine him leaning into all that stuff. That's his whole purpose of it is creating narratives for every single stream. That's the reason why you said that you play PUBG all the time is because the narrative changes every single time that you drop in. The whole reason he's done it in the first place is to be able to create storylines to keep you guys invested. And myself, I absolutely love him. I watch it every time I'm cooking in the kitchen, TV on the wall, Bosh, the doc's going to be on there. Uh, apart from, obviously, on Wednesday nights when Chasing Chris is on. It's the standard, um, obviously. I mean, sorry, Doc. Obviously. Sorry, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> but in, uh, in terms of creativity and stuff absolutely like this is what people are wanting they want narratives we talked about the playstation vr coming out with green hell being the vr game that's on that that's very similar kind of lends itself to it that's the experiences that you want when you come into video games that's what i play video games for i love playing multiplayer video games but my whole getting my kicks when i'm playing them is all about having a storyline. Like, I could read books, I could watch TV, I'd much rather play in a storyline-driven video game. Um, that's where my, that's what my enjoyment I get from video gaming is. So having people that are creative like that is fantastic. I could definitely continue to watch that kind of thing. Um, but I am, I'm excited to see what people make of this on YouTube because there will be people who are creating storylines off the back of this and they're not just playing it to play it. They are literally investing time and effort into not necessarily writing scripts, but to have scripted moments within that. So episode, this episode might be people building their own shelter in the forest or something or trying to take down 30 trees or it's, it's turning to the, the night, not like it's Minecraft and all the vampires and whatever comes out, but it becomes a little bit more dangerous and you have to try and defend your base and things like that. That's all the kind of stuff that I want to be able to watch. Um, so yeah, I'm super looking forward to what kind of content people are going to be creating off of the back of this. I think it's going to be the, I don't want to say the next big thing because the forest is already fucking massive. Like it, you can't escape it. It's like rust, but I reckon that this could definitely be on that top shelf alongside all of those other games that people are currently playing. Cause Warzone seems to be falling off at this moment in time. People are complaining. I've seen people moaning on uh, Twitter saying that the, the AAA bubble is about to burst and there's nothing inventive coming on. That's literally because they're blinded by what's in front of them. No, it, it, people aren't willing to step out of their comfort zone and try and find something else that might be on a different page of the store on Steam or on Epic Game Store or just going onto YouTube and seeing what Triple Jump are talking about or... Do you know what I mean? Like you're not too far away from finding your next obsession when it comes to video games, yeah. and only looking at what's available and what's kick what's absolutely killing it on Twitch at this moment in time isn't always the best gauge of what what's a decent game and what people are playing. Obviously, we've had things like Hogwarts Legacy, which which is doing exceptionally well in numbers, in terms of sales, in terms of people actually being satisfied by a game that's come out. Can you believe that in 2023, people are actually enjoying playing a video game? Imagine. Um, I know. So, yeah, if it, again, this is one of those comfort zone games. If people are willing to give it a chance who might not have played The Forest before, but I've watched maybe 10 minutes of someone streaming it and go, actually, spending 80 hours in this rather than playing a multiplayer PvP game, this might be the space for me. This might be able to get me a lot of content off the back of it. It might just be a game that I'm willing to sit down and invest a lot of time into because I want to be able to see how far I can take this character. Like, I think this is great. This is definitely yeah. great for gaming and that is that is managed to break the status quo, shall we say. I, lo I love this. I, I do love it. My, my only wish is that someone creates a survival game that has this level of success, but with a bit more of a modern edge to it. And I feel like this could be that game. I'm not saying when mm -hmm. I say I only wish as in it's not. I don't know enough about Sons of the Forest. I've only watched one stream and I didn't really get to see enough. But the one thing that I did see was someone had like one of those handheld sort of GPS devices in. That's technology. Nice. Mm -hmm. So maybe we have more modern day stuff. I, I always use the phrase boots on the ground, which means military shooter. I don't necessarily need boots on the ground military shooter. I want that real day aspect. Daisy, but made better, basically. Like, like Daisy has like proper buildings and stuff that you can relate yeah. to, and this and the other. Rust was a little bit like it felt like you were Neanderthalish, sort of stuff like that, and it, it, it and and it was rough around the edges and stuff. I want something that that pushes the, the envelope, and this looks good. This game looks at Sons of the Forest looks good. So I will I will be watching more content on this because mm -hmm. I love the idea that, and I mentioned Mini Minter. Um, We've known Miniminter and worked with him uh, a bunch of times over the years. 
I don't tend to watch a lot of his content specifically. Um, uh, but some of the stuff that some of the best content that he's involved with is the sidemen content. Whether you like the sidemen or not, you cannot deny how good that content is if you stop and you take it in. Like a lot of people are like, nah, it's just it's loud and it's content creators, it's aimed at younger people, different audience, not for me. Okay, that's fine. But when you stop and watch it, and it's it's the banter of six mates, seven mates, how many I can't remember now, uh, that that all laugh and joke together. You get that mm-hmm. many people in a football match, in uh Fall Guys, in Sons of the Forest doing yeah. stupid stuff playing well together it, it's just that it's you can't take your eyes off of good people with good personalities having a good time because that leads to good content can i say good anymore graham all right nice <laughs> um I bet you can. and that's where it's cool that's where this game is cool because it unlocks the potential of that obviously on pc means that not everyone can get involved in it but i love the idea of say me bib and five other people i mean like like sheep uh, or six other people then. Sheep, welcoming dude, says Sons of Forest is so damn fun, especially when you can play with up to eight friends. The building in Forest is amazing. Like, imagine eight different people that were either all streaming or me and Bib streaming and, and six other people stream or whatever, building our base, our life, our scenario, our story from multiple different angles. It's just, it's just it's, that's the stuff that's fucking amazing. Yeah. I love that shit. Love that shit. Not and it, it's not always like thirty minutes and done, like a PUBG. But it's something that you build up over a long period of time. I do mm-hmm. love the idea of that. I love the idea of that. Yeah. Well, um, we attempted that kind of thing with uh, State of Decay, didn't we? Yeah. A, a long term goal of obviously having a place where you can have all your survivors meet and stuff like that. But that was the end goal. Everything else in between, like having Duke of Donuts, fucking driving his car, tipping it over, and then landing on top of you, or then Lake and Glove. Yeah, like yeah, it all of that stuff is all the things that you come in between. But that just it, it wants to keep you in that world. It keeps you wants to keep you invested. And I, I hope that these are the the kind of games that we're gonna get. I was I wasn't too sure on the genre of it. Um, I think I'm still not sure. Like I know it's a survival horror game. I absolutely know that. But the fact that it's a, a, like an open world adventure game at the same time, I'm I'm struggling to categorize it yeah. without putting various different genres in there too. I feel like those kind of games always start off with just the word survival after that anything else beyond that is kind of irrelevant because the game itself ends up not being what the game was intended to be the game ends up being what the community make it and that that is either custom servers or whatever and the custom servers then may evolve to be bigger than what the actual main part of the game is so right now we're this is what the developers want the game to be but after a couple of months with the, the uh, community getting their hands on it, the game will be what that game has grown to be. And that's that's when you've got something cool. My issue with with things like Rust and, and stuff like that is I was late to that party in terms of, not late for the content boom, because Rust just fucking comes back every year and has another <laughs> content boom. So it's not late, for that, just late in terms of like, I don't like a steep learning curve when everyone else around me is an expert. And I'm just there like, I, I don't like to watch that content, so I wouldn't like to make that content, which means I would need tons of time off stream playing this video game and getting used to it and figuring out how it works so I can come in and then work with the chat to grow and be better. Um, but if I start playing now and I was shit, and everyone else around me was shit, and we worked it out together, that's a different scenario. If everyone's just watching me going, oh my God, just fucking, just press your fucking F button there. That's all you need to do. I'm like, how do I do this? How do... Just, <laughs> just fucking F button there. And I'm like, eh? And then I end up dropping it, discarding it, fucking playing State of Decay and losing a weapon underneath the uh, the box and getting <laughs> someone else to come in. Pick, like that sort of shit. So like State of Decay was a bit different because that was that was a console game that was at the end of its life and it was free on, on Game Pass kind of thing. So we would play in it just to give ourselves a little run. We weren't, we weren't bothered about the fact that we were late to that party. It was, it was kind of teeing up us playing more survival content going forward. So I would I would definitely be interested in playing something like this mm-hmm. if my PC was strong enough to uh, manage it. But you know, there you go. So uh, it can do it. If anyone does want to play it in 480p, two 4090 uh, PCs, one for me, one for Bib. We would definitely uh-huh. play this game a lot for you. Nice, nice so PC specialist. CPU using that. BSPC. Yeah, yeah. Scan anyone? No. 
No? Okay, okay. I want, I want to jump back into this, though. So in this, I did say... This game is that big. Two million copies sold in 24 hours. It won't be long before we see the dock. Like we've seen him in, in Fortnite towers that have been built. We've seen him um, dropping in, parachuting into Warzone and everything else in between. Uh, it won't be long before we see him mooching into uh, the forest in Sons of the Forest at all. But I'm bringing this back up. This is Dr. Disrespect's command center. If you ever feel like, I mean, let me let me ju jump back off this and let me go to my multicam screen. One of them won't be on. Oh, fuck it. Yeah, you can't see it because my other one's off. Uh, do you know what? I'll, leave, I'll go back to where I was. I'll go back to where I was. Um, I was going to say, you don't need as many screens and stuff as I've got to have mega success in terms of content creation. Dr. Disrespect is proof. He has three monitors on his setup that don't even match. Um, imagine that. Someone that's got all the success as him and he doesn't even have a specific built matching setup. This, that, mm. You don't need that level of detail. What you need is a functional space. So C920 on a wall mount, cable not even buried into the wall, just loosely going down into his setup. Function first, and it works perfectly. A, a simple green screen at the other side that C920 looks over at. Boom. C920 looking him on top of his monitors. Two of there as well. Not sure why that is, but nice. Uh, that's it. He's an actual human being beyond that. Look, water bottles stuck behind his thing. Cable management, loose wires and stuff out there. But the best thing for me is the fact that his wig and his headset is just on top of his <laughs> yeah. gear fuel bridge. I didn't even notice that until Bibi was talking. That there, uh, it's fucking amazing. Just oh, wonderful, wonderful. I love seeing stuff like that because it just lets you know that it's not about having all the bells and whistles. It's not about playing the best, biggest, most freshest game that's just sold mm -hmm. 2 million copies. All that stuff helps. Don't get me wrong. If you've got more technology, you've got more stuff that you can do. If you have the latest game that's hugely successful, you've got more potential eyes to look at your content. But the main thing is the content needs to hit. And that just goes to show that the doc, the, doc, the two time, um, makes phenomenal content with a setup that, that a lot of people that you know and watch regularly will probably have a better setup technically. Than he yeah. does. I mean, he was that. doing all that without a confidence monitor. Do you yeah. know what I mean? When he goes into his green screen, yeah. Like, how does it? I don't know. I I know we end up talking about him all the time on here. It's because he's genuinely a massive inspiration um, for us and our content and the way that we did our green screen stuff for the Royal Rumble and stuff uh, and things like that is huge, hugely, hugely, hugely inspirational uh, in that kind of thing. But yeah, he genuinely, you can start streaming with a microphone plugged into the bottom of your controller or if you're just using the PS5 controller, like, it doesn't take much. And looking at the way that he approaches everything, it's just his personality over everything else that's in there. And that's it. That's that is inspiring as a content creator. Yeah. My like I was thinking about confidence monitors when I was looking at his setup. The only thing I could think is this screen here, the BenQ Zowie one, um, is if he does work with a confidence monitor monitor, he just stood up and rotates that screen around so he can see it. Um, mm. but it doesn't look like a full, like 180 sort of rotation. Um, Surely you'd knock all the bottles and everything. Yeah, but that, 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 that's, gone this that's the main thing. Yeah, so it doesn't look like that to start, <laughs> but then he clearly doesn't because there's stuff there that would just get in the way. And for those, like Enzo says, what the fuck is a confidence monitor? You don't know what a confidence monitor is? God. A confidence monitor is, it's, 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 um, it's a presentation phrase that has been adopted into mainstream journalism and content so a confidence monitor is when you go to a ted talk or something like that and someone stood on the stage chatting to you um they usually have a big fuck off screen behind them that has stuff on it the most awkward thing is where someone's going hi this is my presentation and turns around not looking at the microphone everything gets a bit quiet you can't see what i'm doing and then i turn back to you again and then a confidence monitor is is a screen usually at on the floor, angled, so it points up at the person, so they can just eyes down and carry on speaking like that. So when I'm speaking to you guys here, I have a display of the screen here, which is the confidence monitor, which is which is more so I can see that the stream's not fucked. <laughs> more, not, yeah. not, not where I am, just that we're on the right screen. That stuff. So that's basically what a confidence monitor is. It's a screen that you have in front of you so you can see what you're doing. So when we did the Royal Rumble and me and West were in the ice cream shack or when I was on the tower in the first Royal Rumble kind of thing, we have a screen so I can see where I'm walking. So I'm not walking too far to break the screen and stuff like that. Um, and the doc just does all of that stuff. Fucking 
one man banding. I've got Bibby pressing yeah. a button for me and I'm walking in. Bibby's going, oh, by the way, this is the screen that we're going into next. Job's good. And I've got tape marks on the floor so I know where I can walk to and things like that. The doc, none of that, just fucking knows it all, which which is exceptional attention to detail. Mm-hmm. So, nice. It's, that's the thing. You'll just have someone... It, when he's setting it all up, he'll just be dressed in normal casual clothes or whatever, and he'll just someone will be sat on the other side of his desk going, "Okay, you can't walk five paces to your right, otherwise you'll break the immersion and things like that." He'll have producers, he'll have directors, but I imagine when he goes into that room, he's just on his own. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, that is phenomenal to have that much creation and control. Do you know? I did at one point in time think about putting like a a green screen here, kind of thing. Uh, where my shelves and stuff are now, and having a camera there so I could do that sort of stuff. But then just thought, nah, don't, nah. His, his room's a bit bigger than mine. Um, if I had a bit of my room, maybe. But but mm-hmm. but even still, the, the effort, the legwork, just to set it up, let alone to use it. And then when you have it and use it to keep it fresh, the dock's not just stopping. Like I've got a green screen set up in here where I've got uh, a hot tub, which we never used, uh, where I've got the, the ice cream uploads pub uh, for pub with G, which I don't really use anymore because you've seen it, you've done it. You need to keep reinventing it. And to have all of that stuff and keep that, it's, it's, it's the drive to keep pushing it forward. That's the big thing. Anyway, big old tangent. We'll stop that. Um, parachuting into Warzone and then quitting and uninstalling the game. I was actually talking about that. Uh, not Warzone, but in Lotus's stream earlier on. So Lotus had just been basically spawn, killed, spawned, killed on PUBG, like dropping into a map, getting thirsted out straight away over and over again. And then they got, they went onto Karakin, which is a divisive map. It, it's not the biggest fan, let's put it that way. They dropped onto a town or a compound that other people were dropping into. It was a city. Um, so he, he had to branch off away from where he was going to drop onto another building. Then as he was going to that building, the black zone on Karakin, which is the one that destroys the buildings, uh, he was like, fuck's sake, I've had to change my path to drop, and there's a black zone on the building. A black zone's already coming in before I even touch the floor. He's like, fuck it, I'm going to loot anyway. If I die, I die. Anyway, lands, and there's about 20 buildings in this city. Guess which building gets destroyed by the Black Zone? Yes, the one that Lotus <laughs> was in, which just reminded Classic me of the... Classic Lotus. Yeah, full-on reminded me of the dock, though. There was, there was like, the dock's going, everyone's going, go back to PUBG, there's a new map, it's cool. Yeah, you should give it a try, there's something the other. It's smaller, it's a bit faster, it's a bit more like Call of Duty, you might like it. So the dock's like, yeah, okay, we'll give it a go. Quits Wars on, installs PUBG, goes back to it, logs in, jumps into the game, lands, goes into one building, doesn't know what the purple blob is on the map, his building gets trashed, he's dead within seconds, he uninstalls the game, and then <laughs> goes back to what's up, which is fucking amazing. Oh, it was literally like, yeah, <laughs> in, out, uninstall, boom. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So yeah, it was one of those days. But Lotus, he was a trooper, he kept on going, GG's to the boy. Um... Uh, according to the official rule of law, according to that random guy who gave you shit once, he should have 2,074 screens for the number of viewers he has. Exactly. Exactly. The Rock's not doing it. Uh, the Rock? The Dock. I mean, The Rock's probably not doing it <laughs> either, but, you know. Um, but he does have a crazy PC. He does, to be fair. That is something he will have. Absolute power. I think he's got, like, multiple, like... I mean, it was last year when it was done, so it'd be 30 series, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he had like three 3080 graphics cards or something when his PC Oof. was built in one PC. <sighs> Overkill. But if you can, why not? Uh, he didn't pay for it either. Oof, of course. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I need one. I already don't have enough. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, welcome in, dude. How did the uh, the event go yesterday? By the way, for those that don't know, Kenny Cobra um, had a five-man's event last night I didn't get to catch any of it because lurgy ish plus um, Carabao Cup final. Uh, and then by the time I sorted my shit out, it was like, oh, just just, just in time to watch Jake Paul get rattled and then bed. Let's go. Uh, so it's basically a digital mirror. Yeah, exactly. I've watched him once and I just didn't understand it. What? What? I mean, I understand. I understand. His content is very much Marmite, I, I imagine. You don't, you, you don't watch wrestling, do you, Enzo? Uh, so if you don't watch wrestling, it's kind of the same sort of thing. You have to give an inch uh, in terms of like, like what's the phrase? It's only weird if you don't embrace it. If you can't embrace it, then it's weird. Uh, but if you can embrace mm-hmm. it, then it's exceptional. It is really, really good. Uh, the doc is the best streamer for content and creativity to ever stream. I agree, hands down. I mean, there probably is someone somewhere that is... So much better, but in terms of top level, triple A tier content creators that invents, reinvents, pushes the envelope, mm-hmm. 
Dr. Disrespect definitely is. Sam, welcome in the stream. How are we diddling? Uh, first, first time chat is ha ha ha. I'm assuming it was for the right reasons. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so yeah, anyway, all the way around the houses to tell you that Sons of the Forest sold 2 million copies in its first 24 hours, which means it's absolutely shit in content. So if, you, if, you, if you've not heard of it, keep your eyes on it on Twitch. Um, do you know what? I think we'll wrap things up there. Oh, no, wait, no, no, actually, with the intro stuff, we've, but we've got one more article. We'll, we've got one more article. Which one do we go? Do we, do we talk about Starfield or do we talk about we can the, do, yeah. the day before? Because the day before, I feel like might oh, yeah. be a bit shorter because we've spoken about it previously. So we'll leave the Let's Starfield. Let's do that then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't seen wrestling since the Ultimate Warrior was a thing. Yeah, you probably won't get it then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Didn't talk PUBG news. I just got back. Um, we just talked about PUBG then and Lotus and the Black Zone. <laughs> Very true. So there you go. Nice. Okay, we'll jump into this article about the day before instead, and then we will wrap things up. Uh, Shubankar Parajat at Gaming Vault says, the day before trademark issues are legitimate. It's been confirmed. So the creator of the calendar app, the day before, has confirmed that it's taken steps to protect, uh, protect trademark rights. Um... Nice. Okay, so it's been sued by a calendar app. Nice. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. <laughs> and my tone as post-apocalyptic survival MMO the day before has been at the several uh, centre of several controversies over the month. From its frequent delays to its underwhelming gameplay showings, it has wide, uh, invoked widespread scepticism from fans for more than a few reasons. Last month, the developer confirmed that the game's launch had been delayed due to a trademark issue, and while there were questions over the uh, legitimacy of said issues, it seems that particular question has now been cleared the developer of a calendar app called the day before has confirmed to Eurogamer in a statement that it did indeed initiate proceedings against fantastic and my toner's survival title in order to protect trademark rights uh, what with the game also having adopted the same name as the app itself quote we first distributed the app under the name the day before in 2010 to provide anniversary counts app services used in many countries around the world the app developer said in its statement we hold trademark uh, trademark rights to the app's name the day before and have so far recorded over 40 million downloads since the trademark registration in Korea in 2015, we have held the right registered in the name of the day before uh, CEO Lee Sun Jae. Uh, knowing that the game of the same name was produced, we are taking measures to protect trademark rights. We currently hold trademark rights in Korea, the United States, China, Russia, Japan, Vietnam, and the EU. How long it will be before the dispute gets resolved remains to be seen, but Fantastic has previously said that it expects a resolution before the game launches in November, assuming it doesn't get delayed again, that is. Uh, so it's just launched November 10th for PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. So, the iPhone calendar mm -hmm. app, it's not that, it's, it's another app called The Day Before, which is basically a reminder service, has... Whoopa! The day before, because, you know, same, 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 well, not same, same, but same name, but different, but still name. Uh, Bib thoughts. Yeah, it is. Are we getting to the point now where we need to cut them a little bit of slack? Um, because I know, obviously, I've given them a load of shit. Um, I say a load of shit. I, I think that there was there's some murky grey area going on here that we're not being told the full truth, which, are we entitled to it? Because none of us have put our money towards this, let's be honest. It's not a kickstart it's not a kickstarter program it's it's someone who's claiming to be creating a video game and they've kind of given us some dodgy looking trailers and stuff like that but we're not owed anything at this moment in time we're building the hype off of something that we're manufacturing are we in a point now where someone's come forward and actually confirmed that they're the guys that have done this in the first place that we go okay they've earned our trust back is that where we're at with this now, and we we should be cutting them a little bit of slack? I I feel I feel like we're at that point now. Yeah, I I said this before as well. Like we we haven't actually given anything up. You can't pre-order the game on Steam. There is no Kickstarters. Nobody has given a single penny to Fantastic or My Toner for the day before. The only thing people have done is wishlisted on Steam, which is a I would like to buy this if it ever becomes available. So because people show their interest in something, 
people are seeing that and treating that as a transactional exchange. Because I have wishlisted you, therefore showing intent, it's probably added value to you from a, a shareholder perspective or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you're benefiting off that. But, but I don't feel like that's enough. I feel that just, just because you've said you like something doesn't mean that you have access to it and ownership of it. So I do feel there is a lot uh, around this. And I've said it numerous times on the streams. Is it worrying? Yes, if you look at it that way. If you're looking to be worried, then yes, it is. But as I've said all along, a, a developer that's had, apart from Prop Night, not really any major successes mm -hmm. outside of mobile games it's it's games clearly are that that unsuccessful i wouldn't say shit but unsuccessful that it's removed them from its portfolio it's <laughs> it doesn't want to be seen to be that it, it clearly feels like as a team that they have so much more to give than what they've done mm -hmm. or they've grown so much more that what they used to be able to achieve isn't representative of what they can achieve, but people will judge based on those past experiences, which, which then creates a different conversation. For whatever reason, there is reasons for everything that has happened. And one of them is the fact that it's probably a small team. So because yeah. they've made these mobile games and they've skilled up in terms of development, so that's the only area where they could properly invest cash money, which is the most important place, has led to what could potentially be the biggest and best game ever. Um, but in doing that, they've had to cut the corners on PR and stuff like that, and and copyright law. Um, so oh fuck, we didn't we didn't tie down the name. Oh fuck, we've not really released press releases in the in the proper approved way. Our, our community team isn't the greatest because we're a a small. Are they are they Russian? But not, uh, are, are Ukraine? But lived? Are they were in Russia? I don't know. There's some some Eastern Bloc territory. I I'm, I can't remember the the. The exact situation. I know there was mm. some sort of unrest because of uh, Russia's war on Ukraine. I don't know if they were Russian and wanted to get out so they can make the content, or they were Ukrainian and were impacted. I can't remember which way it was. Um, if anyone does know, do feel free to let us know in the chat, by the way. Um, so they're a non-English speaking team primarily, which means that they there's all sorts of cultural things. Even though they are European, they use yeah. different apps. Russia uses, like, Something that looks like VK Vodka Kick as their as their their version of Facebook and stuff. That's their primary thing. They don't use uh, all the other ones to the same level that we do. Uh, social media, that is. So there's all sorts of things that they probably, as a small team without the skills, may have just taken for granted that can be explained. Um, yeah. However, I will say just because all of that can be explained, it could still be a shit show. It could mm -hmm. not. It could be a game that has been made by some people that absolutely want it to be successful, that absolutely have the right reasons, that absolutely want to give you the, the a game like DayZ that will live so much longer than people would expect it and have absolute peaks and troughs. That could be their goal. They want to give you something that they feel absolutely passionate about, but it could still be crap. It could still never hit those heights. And that 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 is a reality for video games. But that's a, re a reality that people can check People can mm -hmm. control, just like people can feel entitled to have the game and shit uh, post about it instantly. People can can be entitled, can feel like I'm excited about the game, but it might be a shit show. As long as I keep that in mind, jobs are good. And if it comes to it, don't buy it. Do not pre-order mm -hmm. it. Just wait until someone else plays it. Wait until Ice Cream uploads does some content roundups for all of the <laughs> reviews and so on. And then you can shit post about it. Go, do you know what? I was going to buy it. It's crap. It doesn't work. The servers are crap. The, the microtransactions that were never mentioned are horrendous. The whole thing is based mm -hmm. around loot crates or battle passes that have nothing in them. Blah, 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 blah. How many times have you seen that stuff happen with, with AAA games kind of things? Mm -hmm. This isn't AAA. That doesn't even have that level of, of skill. If Avengers can get all the way to launch before people realize it's it's very season passy and not very much content in it. Or if Suicide Squad can get right up until last week before people realize that it is very much a heavy season pass focus on it. And that is Warner Brothers and Marvel and DC and Disney and Square Enix that are all involved in these games. If they can have that level of content mishap, imagine what a smaller developer that doesn't even publish their own games can cock up on so yeah trademark issues are legitimate as i expected they would they would be um 
and there's probably a bit more bumps in the road. Will it come out in November? I'm not sure. I hope it does, but I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but if you want to know, just keep your eyes on us. We'll keep you updated. Yeah. We will. Um, he reminds me of Habrick Kid, so no wonder you like him. Uh, you always did like the cocky slash arrogant characters. Not always. Not always. I, I actually, like, cocky, arrogant characters do rub me up the wrong way because I think you fucking bellend. It's only when, like, you feel the cocky arrogance is earned. If someone's just a cocky, arrogant dickhead, and to use a, a word that's not been used since the 90s, uh, and you feel they're just fronting, then you're just like, yeah, no, nah, not interested. But if you feel like it's someone that's, that's got some... Shawn Michaels has star quality. You can't tell me Shawn Michaels. He was a cocky, arrogant fuck, but he was doing fucking... Uh, Top rope, that was a fuck. Is there even a name for the going over the top rope in the rumble and then coming back over and, and going off the fucking top of cells and shit like that? Like before others and stuff, it was pushing the envelope early early on. So, the, the, the reason they call him Mr. Main Event for a reason, do you know what I mean? He's the icon, he's the showstopper, he's the main event. Mm. Yeah, fuck, let's go, baby. Uh, so yeah, uh, and the same with the doc. The thing with the doc as well, he, he humanizes it whilst he is cocky and arrogant. If you watch his content, he's not a dick. And that's the difference. Shawn Michaels could be a dick. I know when he, when he was when he was a heel, he was a dick. But when he wasn't all heel, he was cocky and arrogant. But he was human mm -hmm. as well. And that's the key thing for me um, is is someone that has the cocky and arrogance, but has the human side. And a lot of people don't see that. They just see the doc as a rude, brash dickhead. And and that's when you know they've not watched <laughs> enough. Like a lot of people think the Rock is that, but a lot of people love love Dwayne the Rock Johnson now. And it's like, yeah, but. That's because you've seen the the rock as a heel and a face, yeah. And the doc is both very much so. He'll go from being shit talking a game, talking about there's nothing to play out here, there's no video games, it's goddamn snooze fest out there, to <laughs> to doing randoms on Christmas Day with some kid and then just playing with him time after time after time and helping his mm -hmm. stream get thousands of followers and stuff. It's that sort of person. But unless you watch it. You don't see it, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it's an investment in time. Like uh, you always say, I mean, this has just turned into a. I'm going to change the name of this podcast, uh, this episode at least, into a doc loving one. Um, but yeah, like like you said, he's he is just such a. a Ch polarizing change the character S on scoop to a two. We'll call it the two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is a very polarizing character, and I think he understands that. He knows that himself. Um, but if you're in, you're in, and you'll understand why. Like when he's on tonight, if you there like half an hour I, I implore you to watch it just watch him at his craft he is you won't see anybody on the on on twitch on youtube on any other platform that are doing what he does and there's a reason why he's been at the top for very sort of for, uh, for, for so long he's yeah. just he's mint 100 percent. he under <clears throat> understands video game marketing as well as video game creation plus content the whole journey but that's enough about us uh, sorry, we're talking about the dog then. Sorry, god damn. Uh, but that is enough from us. We are going to disappear. We're going to we're going to move the story that we had on Starfield because that could be a whole conversation on itself. We're going to move yep. that to tomorrow. So do feel free to join us 10 a.m. ish uh, for that. It won't be at 10 a.m. I can tell you that for certain because we have a yeah. meeting at 10 a.m. <laughs> I have a then follow up meeting after that one. Um, well, not a follow up, a different meeting after that one following it. So it will be an afternoon scoop definitely tomorrow. So do feel free to join us in the afternoon if. If you want to know what time it is, as always, uh, drop a follow on the channel. You get notified whenever we do go live and all that jazz. But before that happens, before of that happens, yes, I, mm -hmm. I, I can English. Let's go. Yeah. Um, is there anything you'd like to add, Mr. Bib? Yes, of course. Uh, a couple of things, actually. So we mentioned at the top of the show the fact that we are now on Anchor. We are no longer placing any of our podcasts over on SoundCloud. So if you're on SoundCloud and you're wondering why, this is the reason why I will change the banner over there and our conversation pieces as to where you can find us. So when you go onto our platform on SoundCloud, it, it, our plat we're not deleting our profile from there. It will still have our episodes, but it just won't be getting any new ones. So I'll link off to where you can find those episodes now. They're in the same places apart from we've obviously got Apple Music and we're being hosted on Anchor now. Um, but if you are listening to this on Spotify, please, 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 please. Give it five stars, get a follow, put those notifications on. So when the episodes do go live, which will be going live in maybe like an hour or so from now, which is quarter to five, um, so maybe quarter to six-ish, you'll get notified. You'll get it directly onto your phone right there. I scream at loads of posts and new episodes of The Scoop. That will genuinely help us out a lot in you guys doing that. Um, but second thing, we've got four more episodes this week. So if you want to help and get involved with any of those, there is two ways you can do so. First of all, Find us on social media. Spoiler alert. 
it's ice cream uploads across absolutely everything, as you can imagine. All you need to do is find us, go into the description below, get the URLs, maybe come over to our Discord, have a look into down the side there, you'll see something called the scoop. Drop nice. in the URL nice. and your thoughts and impressions. We will then give you our thoughts and impressions. At what time? We've already been through this. Tomorrow, <laughs> Mr. Graham Day. Uh, probably mid-afternoon. Mm ish. Confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> 10 a.m. ish, ish, ish. As mentioned, we aim for 10 a.m., but it's very rarely at 10 a.m. because we do video games stuff. Um, so it fits in around that. Tomorrow will probably be an afternoon episode of the show. So do yeah. feel free to join us for that. Madge, welcome in. Hey. Hey. I'll Speaking read. Legends. Absolute ledge, mate. Uh, dropping in the exclamation mark socials, JMK and Madge fighting over it. Oof. Love Oof. that. Um, Skinning the cat. Oh, is that the name of going over the ropes backwards? Ah, I didn't know. There you go. You learn something new every day. Hashtag Shape Our Show. It's been a while since we've said hashtag Shape Our Show. Mm-hmm. See, that, that's, that's how long Madge has been around these parts. He knows back in the day. Since then, though, since Madge was here in the hashtag Shape Our Show, we've, we've got a new mod in town. His name is, is... Look, there you go. You can see the face. Yep, that is Bibby. Bibby is, is a mod. Is the no one mod. On the, this, it's Tito. Tito. Sorry. 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 Ted Sorry. Not. Uh, Theodore Nort, as, as if you want his full name. Nice. Anyway, we're going to disappear. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you all for dropping in. Thank you very much for sticking around for uh, another video game ramble. We'll have four more for you this week, should everything go according to plan. Plus, a few extra streams as well. PUBG Wednesday, PUBG Saturday, and do we know what's happening with PGA? Is it going to be back in this week? Are we not sure? <laughs> I don't know, Graham. I think they're back on. I think they've gone back to the drawing board with it. So, uh, yeah, I'll... I'll... I'll tell you exactly what we were playing on Friday because I'm waiting for that to go live again. If it doesn't go live again, we are retro achievement hunting, baby. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, keep your eyes fixed on us. You've got all the links and stuff in the chat. Do drop follows across all of those. We're going to disappear now. Stick around, though. We'll raid one of our friends. We'll pass you on to someone that we absolutely love and adore. Mm-hmm. His name is Spidge. Oof, okay. Absolutely do live in a door then. I was going to say, some people are a bit like, yeah, but spit you out. <laughs> That's it from us. Have a good day. And stay frosty. Stay frosty. Stay frosty.